Some telescopes are awesome when it comes to high resolution photography. And then there are such small apochromatic refractors. They are very handy and lightweighted, but what are they really good for? I talked to some beginners and they told me that professional astrophotographers recommended them to use a small apochromatic refractor like this. So, is it a good telescope to start with? At first, the big advantage is the plug-and-play character of this telescope. The things are small and usually you don't have to collimate them. Plus, they are ready to use fastly because they don't have to cool down for a long time, like, for example, a telescope with a closed tube like this schmidt cassegrain So, you put this refractor on a mount, attach the camera and you're always ready to go. That are definitely good reasons why a small apochromatic refractor can be fun. Small apochromatic refractors are awesome travel telescopes because they are lightweighted and stable. Usually they come with a flight case so you can take them easily and safely with you. But there are some severe disadvantages we have to talk about. Small refractors are of course very small like this one. That means they collect only a small amount of light in a certain time, while bigger telescopes, like big Newton telescopes for example, would catch much more light in the same time. So of course deep sky images become much deeper in the same time if you choose a bigger telescope, like a Newton with a big aperture. Recently I took two images of the famous Macarian chain with the same equipment but one with the 8 inch Newton that consists of only an hour and a few minutes exposure time. And this image. This was taken with the small TS 70mm Imaging Star Apochromatic Refractor. It consists of more than 3 hours of exposure time and as you can see the galaxies are still very faint and it, need, it needs much more exposure time until the galaxies become clearly visible and an eye catcher. Another important point, color aberrations. Even small EDs and even some triplet apochromatic refractors suffer from color aberrations. So you will see violet or bluish stars. If it says triplet lens with FPL 53 glass from O'Hara in Japan, you can be sure there won't be a lot of color aberrations. But if it says FPL 51 ED doublet lens, there will be a clearly visible color aberration. Whether that disturbs you? That's up to you, but you should inform yourself before buying how severe the color aberrations of a certain lens and glass is. Another important point is of course the price. Even small apochromatic refractors are very expensive. This little one is as expensive as two of my 8 inch Newtons. And the last important disadvantage. Small apochromatic refractors need flatteners or you won't have nice pointy stars in the corners. This telescope has a built-in flattener but that makes it even more expensive. So be aware that you have to invest money in a flattener or to buy a flat field telescope that is more expensive. So after taking a short look at the advantages and disadvantages of this kind of telescopes, it's time for the conclusion. Small apochromatic refractors are great for plug and play sessions. I love this small apo indeed. If I am, for example, tired from work and simply want to set up an easy to use setup for collecting a few hours of light without spending too much effort. Another moment in which I'd prefer to use an easy to handle telescope like this is the testing of new equipment. For example, I'm using my first cool CCD since January. The cameras are something completely different if you only use DSLR cameras before. So I could concentrate on how that camera works without concentrating too much on the telescope itself. Another situation in which a small refractor does a great job is a night with bad seeing conditions. The focal length is very short so some blurry stars doesn't seem as bad as for example with this Newton with its one meter focal length. 
So, all in all you can see, small apochromatic refractors are nice and user-friendly telescopes, but you need realistic expectations to be happy with them. And you will spend much money while other telescopes, that are usually harder to handle, would show you much deeper images in the same time. So, that's why I would recommend such a telescope if you already have your main telescope and workhorse, like a big Newton or something. It's a great second or third scope. If it's your entry for astrophotography, be sure to be well informed before buying. There is a chance you could be disappointed. So, that's why I'd always recommend to start with a 130 or 150 mm Newton, which is much cheaper but has great optics. If you're interested in the advantages of starting your astrophotography journey with a Newton, check out my review of the Skywatcher 130 PDS. If you find this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and I'd be really happy to see you again by subscribing to my channel. Clear skies.